David Wilson Holmes, weak mortar issue. Uh, I wanted to share with you the findings from my uh, mortar uh, report. Uh, this was done by a professional testing laboratory. Uh, so, so for those who have seen my previous video related to the weak mortar in my house and garage, uh, I originally contacted uh, the managing director of David Wilson Homes. There's currently no uh, customer care manager. They left and there's nobody that's replaced him. So I've been dealing directly with uh, John Reddington, the regional managing director. I uh, uploaded a video illustrating the weak mortar, how it just uh, dusts away when you touch it. He reviewed the video and said that there was nothing there that concerned him. So, I mean, re really mortar used in, in the building of houses shouldn't just flake away indefinitely when you keep rubbing it. I mean, you just shouldn't do that. So I raised the case with the NHBC. They took a look at the video and dispatched one of their inspectors. They visited uh, us three weeks ago, carried out the inspection and confirmed that the mortar was weak and advised David Wilson to rake out 25 mil of the weak mortar and repoint using uh, the correct standard mortar. So they identified that that mortar didn't match their own uh, NHBC standards. Unfortunately, the NHBC inspector refused point blank to take a, state, uh, take a sample of the wheat mortar. He was unable to uh, tell me why or what the cause of the wheat mortar was. He did advise that it wasn't caused by frost damage. So at that point, we had no idea what the cause of the wheat mortar was, whether it was just a, a poor mix or, or some other uh, element that had caused the, the, the mortar to become weak. Uh, obviously that was a concern to us, it didn't, it didn't seem to be to them, they just simply wanted the wheat mortar removed and covered over as quick as possible. So I collected uh, two samples of, uh, of the mortar, I contacted a, uh, a laboratory that specialises in that, they advised how to collect the mortar to remove you know, 5 mil of the top, uh, top layer of mortar and then collect from a depth along a uh, along a continuous line. So I collected uh, two lots of uh, 100 grams, sent those off to be uh, analysed. So this is the report from the first inspection and uh, the NHBC standard for mortar used in this area should be, uh, and the mix is cement to lime to sand, should be 1 to 1 to 5.5. Our sample came back as one, so one of cement, uh, 0.5 of lime, and 7.5 of sand or aggregate. So in this situation, so in my case, they've got exactly, the, the mortar has exactly half the amount of lime and almost 50% almost, uh, too much sand. Now, that, that mix, uh, from from uh, checking different standards, that kind of thing, that mix is uh, is exactly the opposite way that you would make mortar stronger. So to create a stronger bond of mortar, you would uh, you would add less sand, and, and that's what they use in uh, in areas such as North of Scotland, where they get more severe weather conditions to make the uh, the uh, mortar more durable. So it would seem that. The mortar used in our house, the reason for it being obviously flaking away is because it's weak. It actually meets no British standard. There's no strength testing on this. I would assume that it's, you know, far under strength um, and not fit for purpose. Um, so I contacted David Wilson, supplied him with a copy of the report uh, and asked them to, to investigate it and to carry out further inspections and the fact that it's present in both our house and garage would lead me to believe that it's highly likely that it's also present in other houses on the development. Now, the managing director of David Wilson Homes said that all their mortar is supplied to site pre-mixed. So I take that to mean that either the company that's supplying the mortar and this same company supplies mortar all, all throughout the country is, is um, mixing a uh, uh, batches of mortar that, that, that don't meet the British standards. That seems highly unlikely, but you, I guess it's possible. Or the other alternative is, is that David Wilson is adding more sand once the, the mortar arrives on site. You know, uh, I guess sand is a lot cheaper than, uh, than uh, cement. 
and by adding to it you can make it go further it might be easier to apply it. I really don't know but uh, you know I, I don't know where the uh, the wheat mortar is uh, you know the root of the, the wheat mortar is um, David Wilson do not seem interested at all in investigating this they again they're not interested in coming out carrying out checks themselves I've invited them to do that they're not interested they don't seem interested in contacting any of the homeowners on the development. So I then contacted the NHBC, I supplied them with a copy of this, and I've requested technical data that supports uh, a remedy of, you know, a 25 mil rake out and repointing with uh, a stronger mortar as a solution when, when this type of mortar is found. Now, you know, I understand that raking out 25 mil mortar and replacing it might be a valid solution in the uh, in the event that uh, frost damaged uh, mortar is found. But but when the mortar itself is you know is is weak and as in this case proven to be weak, whether their solution is valid, given that you know the bricks are 100 mil wide, that's 75 mil of mortar that's still weak. It's still sitting in there. If uh, uh, I don't know what the implications are of, uh, of that, you know, and, uh, and if that's going to cause any structural issues. Certainly, a number of the issues that we've had with this property could be questioned as, uh, as structural related. We've had doors that have dropped. We've, we've just had a, uh, a new ensuite door and frame and everything fitted 10 days ago, and that's moved. We can't even close the door on that. We've had problems, repeated problems with cracking that have come along around the staircase. They've refilled twice and it's, it's now cracked again. We also uh, believe that, that's part of, that some of the stairs are moved. I'll, I'll video that and upload it uh, in a separate video. So, uh, so basically, that's the, uh, that's the report we received. We're still waiting on the other one. That one seems to be a little bit in limbo because the, uh, the laboratory contacted me last week and said that they cannot match the sample that I've given them with what's called a, a mortar destination. I didn't know what that was at the time, but that's also written here. So it's basically the mortar destination is an M standard. So uh, I believe that the type that should be used uh, in this area for building work is what's called an M4. Um, and they're unable to match it to any, uh, any of the British standards M rate. And so that's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, I believe that we'll probably need to employ a, either, either a structural engineer or a chartered surveyor to, to carry out a check of the property to see if the uh, mortar is fit for purpose.